Okay. I know. <laughs> All right, we're ready. I call to order the meeting of the Gear Park Planning Commission, August tenth. All commissioners are present, and Angelina and Chad are here representing the staff. We have a consent agenda consisting of the minutes from July 13th, the financial report from July 23rd, and no correspondence. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented? I move. Thank you. Russ has moved. Do I have a second? Second. Paul Einan has seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, reports. What do we have from the staff? Do we have anything for you today, Chad? No. We have no report from Chad. Angelina, do you have anything to report? No, this will be a quick meeting. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, the commissioners have anything to report? Nothing to report. Uh, we have the goals list there. Um, I think there was an update from the last one. <laughs> we did something, but are there any concerns about it as it is now or any other comments on the goals list? Not seeing any? I will move on. Now is the time for visitors' comments not related to the agenda. Do any of the visitors have anything they'd like to share today? Thank you. Okay, public hearings, we have none. So we have moved very quickly into our topic for tonight, the unfinished business, the tree planting planning ordinance discussion, the tree committee process discussion. You all received um, the draft proposal, and Angelina once again gave us the original. I now have like 20 copies of this. Thank you, Angelina. Uh, so, Chad or John, which one would you like to speak about it? I think Russ was going to start. What? Okay, Russ. What? Russ. Sorry. Russ. <laughs> That's for the recording. <laughs> okay, uh, so John and I took this on as kind of a, a, a dual, uh, <clears throat> dual, you know, uh, project. My the first thing, really, the, the major thing that I did is I revised the uh, section 607. Or I didn't revise it, I edited it because I thought there was redundant language. And that's what you primarily see in, in that first, what used to be section one, two, three, and four are now down to one and two. <clears throat> the rest of it, I pretty much left the same. John and I, <clears throat> we kind of came to the same conclusion about using circumference as opposed to diameter because we felt it was an easier uh, measurement to for, for the homeowner and the city to take on a tree. And then John and I met, uh, both of us looking at my edited edition and John took it from there and what we're looking at with all the comments, that's, that's his work. So I'll hand it off to him. Okay, John. Okay, so just to make sure everybody's on the same page, if you don't just pick up the uh, version of the comments, the color comments, um, what Russ was referring to in the first section, primarily in one and two, uh, and you'll see some comments over to the right, questioning back and forth with me, Chad, Russ, whether or not this is an appropriate time for up to discuss these because they aren't specifically relevant to the tree issue, but there were some redundancies in sections one and two related to continuing references to US Highway 101. Um, so um, Russ consolidated those and made it much easier, in my opinion, to read. The commission can decide uh, whether or not we would want to deal with that right now, because again, it's not specific to the tree issue. If we, uh, and also note that um, Chad uh, pointed out that there are several references in here we don't actually have any content for. Um, so, for example, there's the reference to no plans for his by the city of Gear, and uh, Chad highlighted there is a way for us to add an appropriate footnote or reference to that. 
But then to get past all of that, um, we get into uh, section six, which is where the real content change. As Russ mentioned, uh, in section 6B, uh, we obviously it's easy to wrap a spring around a tree. As a conference, it's awfully hard to figure out exactly what the diameter of a tree is. Where do you, where do, you do that? Uh, and also, we just decided to pick a number, 30 inches in circumference, which is slightly smaller than the trees that were identified earlier. The commission can decide whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, if we then advance to section 6D, this is where I would say the meat of this is. Um, and if you recall, the core of the goal here was really uh, a discussion that we had with Angelina, uh, indicating that there's quite a bit of activity in this area, but that there's no way really to monitor it. There's no way really to understand when a person says they're cutting down five trees over the course of a year, have they cut down one tree or two trees or three trees, or when did they start counting the trees, et cetera. So the easiest way to address that is to continue to allow five trees uh, per year, but to permit every instance of a tree cut. Uh, and so that's what um, section 6D, uh, subsection one does is change the two, you know, uh, uh, allowing the five trees to be cut, but indicating that you know, with a permit, you can cut up to five trees. Um, and you, when you are going to cut down a tree as defined by the language, you need to remove a, to obtain a tree removal permit. We have not prepared that permit, but uh, Chad's indicated some verbiage in the comment over to the right uh, that he would like to see in such a form should we proceed with planning commission uh, approvals to proceed that level. Um, then there are some content changes um, in uh, section four is removed because um, uh, section four is has been replaced um, by let's see uh, section uh, H two. We'll come to that in a minute. Um, actually, you want to just point us there right now. There, this whole G and H is all new. We'll come to that in a second. I just want to make you aware the G and H is there. And they relate to what happens when one submits a, uh, a, uh, a pre removal permit or one request a pre removal permit from the city using the aforementioned form. Um, I did want to just comment briefly uh, in section E, which I guess we're in 6E now. This is something, this is not a change. Uh, but this is something that it took me a couple of readings to understand. When I first reviewed this content, I was taken aback by the idea that you can just cut five trees down willy-nilly. <coughs> we could be you know, having that to be a con of consequence across the community. But I just wanted to point out in my comment uh, where it's at JM16 that there are criteria. And these are not new criteria. These are established criteria that were already in uh, the uh, ordinance. Um, Chad has indicated some other potential changes to the criteria. We've not made those yet, uh, but you can see them over on the right uh, in, in chat CS 17, 18, and 19. Um, but the key element I wanted to point out here is you have to have a reason to cut down a tree. You can't just have cutting down five trees. And that was always there. That's not new language. The new language is primarily indicating you need to permit each instance. And then, as I had mentioned, uh, sections G and H are new. Uh, they are the language that Chad helped us with. Um, and we probably want to change the 30 days to 90 days. Uh, that's a little bit over the right. Uh, but these are what happens when you submit a permit uh, application. Uh, and it talks about an assessment being made and the evaluation of the impact of the tree removal, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then basically it says, you know, uh, if you have submitted a permit uh, that complies with the conditions uh, that are listed in section E uh, and this assessment is done, then if there's no reason not to permit it, uh, to permit it, the permitting will be, will be uh, provided. Um, and then at the very bottom, there is a section about 
you know, if we choose to proceed along these lines, any portion of this work that you guys choose to want to proceed with, uh, we need to do some education of the community. Um, as Chad pointed out, this could be a controversial change. And the experience of Chad and all of you, I'm sure, over the years is that when you do something like this, you know, communicate effectively and thoroughly to the community and get input um, as needed. Um, the last thing I'll say, and then turn it over to Chad if he wants to highlight any other specific input uh, upon the uh, chair's authority, um, is that um, there's a whole nother element to this that after reflection, we chose slash I chose not to bring in front of the, the board at this point in time, which was really Sharon's original, we want to plant a bunch of trees and what do we do about that? Because we didn't get a sense there was much appetite for that in the planning commission. If the planning commission redirects us to go back and continue to work on that, happy to do so. But my sense from the last meeting was there wasn't much appetite for um, kind of public approval for tree planting and that process. But it's not in here. If we're sent back to the drawing board to go to do that work, that's work that we're totally ready to do. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you, John. Chad, do you want to add anything? No, other than, well, yeah, I guess, you know, the last comment, CS24, is this really controversial? Um, I've been in a mood. I should like to change that to maybe. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, no, I think that the, the goals again were to come up with a permitting process so we knew what was going on, when and where. And then the second goal that, uh, or another goal that uh, Councillor Sharon uh, wanted to is also potentially reduce the size of what the definition of a tree is. And the way that the city finds trees is at this point 12 inches and greater. If it's 12 inches, or less than 12 inches, then we say it's not a tree for purposes of this particular uh, ordinance. So that's kind of how we handle those things. <clears throat> Keeping it simple is the way that's going to work the best as well. I saw, you know, ecological uh, considerations in there. If we were going to do some of these considerations and figure out how to make decisions based on those considerations, then we're going to have to be very um, detailed about how that is going to go and procedure and uh, potentially professionals to help us in with that. Now that of course is going to take extra staff time. So fees would have to be applied as well, probably to take care of some of that staff time and those expenses. Um, and there should probably be a fee for this type of permit anyway, uh, depending on how it comes out, what we need to do. Uh, and then we can as staff kind of assess an approximate amount of time uh, and apply those fees to that as well. So, um, other than that, I think this is a good start uh, and give us some discussion points for sure. Thank you, Jeff. So, I'll start over there with you, Don. Okay. Comments, concerns, questions, questions with the free work too. Okay, I have a few questions. Um, why is the circumference a better measurement than the diameter? Well, this is, I, I'm just looking at it like you know, it's going to be me holding the tape across this and saying that looks like two and a half inches. And you say it looks like three inches, you know, and you and you're on the other side of it. Oh gosh, that's wider. That looks like five. With a you run a string around it, you make a mark on the string, you pull it out, you measure the string. That's thirty or less than, right. greater than that number. So has anybody done the? Remember calculus class, um, like a diameter. Well, that, that yeah, it's not what, what is it's about it's nine, nine, and nine, nine, nine and a half, Thirty, yeah. nine and a half. 30 yeah. inches, <laughs> about, about nine and a half. Yeah, it's in the comments. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to try to keep that equitable, just, it, it just make it easier to measure. That, that, that was my thing. Okay, easier for the homeowner, easier for staff to, to go up uh, if the homeowner said, gee. That's that's 29, and they go look at it and they say we get 32. You lay the strings on the ground and right. have okay. a debate. <laughs> Still at, it's pretty simple. At four and a half feet. That's four and a half feet. Okay. Wow. All right. Anything else down? Yes. There? Um right. so sure. just 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 wait. I'll I'll, I'll give people. I let him finish. I would let you. Oh, fine, but 
Uh, it's just a question of this question. Okay, Paul, I have what you want to. I think you said that the that the, the changing to the circumference from the caliper measure would be equal. My question is is to what's the, what is the standard right now? Twelve. Twelve inches. So that twelve inches in diameter, what does that equal in circumference? I'll do that. It would be more than 37.68. 37.68. So that's our number, unless we want to change the ordinance in that direction, right? I'm going to write that down. 37. And a recommendation. Thank you. Or come down a bit. Or come down. At least to 35 <laughs> Okay, that, that's all. I, I was curious about that. Um, I guess the question for you, Chad, is, what is the process of this if the planning commission decides to make these changes it's just going to be forward to the city council and they would then have a session about approval yeah you make recommendation to the city council okay. so you come up with whatever it is that you want to and work on it as much as you'd like uh, whether it not be a complete version or maybe you kick up something for some consideration but I think the best way is that you folks come up with what you'd like and then we'll present that to the council with Garrett and Gina. And uh, then they take it from there. Okay. Um, Chad, wouldn't we have to have a public hearing? Well, there's those, yes. Yes, we have to have public hearings. Done. So we would have a public hearing. We would have a public hearing. Okay. Planning. Gotcha. The planning commission would be because we're changing ordinance. And, and we have that part of our comprehensive plan out that we get public input. Um, so to add, a, we're essentially adding an assessment, and I presume that means to make sure it's not in a riparian area um, or other potential kind of issues like that, and an evaluation of tree removal, and you did kind of address this, that's going to add to the cost of the fee, the permit fee. Yeah, there'd be a nominal fee or something like this to cover some staff time. Right, so that I've talked to a few people in the community about this, and that seems to be like the one issue. It's like something we can do for free now is now the city is going to require some money, and your time is valuable, and obviously you should be compensated. Um, but I think that's going to be the hurdle, and maybe that's what you guys are talking about, as it may be controversial. Um, that's just a concern of mine. Um, and I just think we need to be aware of that as we move forward with that. I like the idea of the city tracking these removal of the trees, the kinds of trees when they're removing, because that data could be important, I think, at some point. Um, what do we do? Do we have a non compliance plan? Uh, in the zoning code, uh, a violation of the zoning code itself is five hundred dollars per occurrence. I've had uh, some discussions with people about that, and to some people, that's a permit fee price. You know, where they will look at a tree, and if the city says no or they don't want to ask the question, they just want to do it. They've almost paid five hundred dollars, you know, for that. But fortunately, <laughs> I've never had that. Uh, we have um, not had very many cases in regards to these trees. Some people we don't catch, I admit that, uh, because it happens on a weekend or it never gets reported. Uh, and then they claim that they just didn't know about the process. But for the most part, um, I think that it, it really depends on what you write in here and how much that process is. But your point about the riparian area, you know, and making sure that we're accommodating for that. Another nice feature might be to make sure that the pro the tree is actually on their property. Mm -hmm. You know, we would have some requirements about that. And we do have technology these days on our okay. phones that we can get pretty close. Um, so um, those are just two other Okay. And just as we try to take a little more control of this or whatever, I just see some of those as the potential pitfalls and issues coming up. Um, does the city recommend any certified offers in the area, or is that on the homeowner too? So it's on the homeowner to figure that out. Um, we'll give them a list of three at least, you know, to kind of keep it fair. Um, uh, and we'll rotate those through. I never recommend just one. 
And the other issue that I think was also curious to Councillor Sharon was that, well, some of these arborists are also the tree cutters. So you're inviting an arborist to say, yeah, that one's dead, I'm, I'm gonna cut it down. Uh, so she thought maybe a separation between who's doing the cutting and who's doing the arborist work might be clever, might be a good thing to do. But I mean, once you get the items in here, if you don't think about the cost and really how it's going to be other than you know, logically, then staff will score it and let you know what we think this is going to take. You know, we'll kind of put some math to it, time, effort, and find any holes as well. So I think that for you folks, you can talk about what it is that you want. And we can just work on figuring out how we work on it. Yeah, how we work on it. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Don. Judy? Uh, it, I just heard you say, Chad, that there really hasn't been very many cases with the trees. So my question, my assumption is, is that we are looking at this process to make life easier for you guys as we deal with the issue of people cutting down trees. But my, my underlying question is, what's the problem we're trying to solve here if there aren't really very many cases? I'm all for making your life easier. If, if adding levels of permitting is what it takes. I'm just not sure what the problem is. I think part of it is we got some very passionate people in town that are very concerned about the trees. And so they come in and they say, what's going on here? And we say, we don't know, we'll go find out. Could be two days, could be a week later. It could just be a bunch of chips around the stump and now they want answers. And that's difficult. Or when you look at the stumps and people, we, we allow people to cut the trees, but then people look at the sizes of the stumps. You know, it's hard to quanti quantify that, that you know, four and a half feet up, it's a much smaller trunk. Down below, it's a much larger. So there's some energies about that. And a permitting process would be a documentation of some of that. Your idea, Russ, about the circumference is, is a good one. I think that that takes odd shaped trees and things like that, which is another issue that we have, being able to measure them. And when you held up a ruler to a tree like this, depending on which eye you used, it would be either in or out. You know? So it's not the best method. So that, that would be a good one as well. Anything else, Judy? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, Terry. Well, Judy raised the question that was first and foremost on my mind and where did this come from and i remember when we went through the park plan up pops of trees out of the blue and we spent two or three meetings over fighting these uh, draconian issues that had to do with trees and we got a lot of pushback from the public on that and we were able to water it down so it finally made sense and I think you hit the nail on the head. There's some people out here who, I mean, I'm a conservationist. I mean, I, I love trees, but I, I think you have to have some sense in it. And I just don't want us to start going down a rabbit hole or chase down a rabbit hole over this. And I sense that that's exactly what has happened. And the second issue, and I may misunderstand it, but it sounds like it's up to the planning commission to grant these permits. Is that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So currently, I'm the one that goes up and checks, but there's no permitting process. If you want to cut down more than five trees, then it's a permit that would come to the planning commission. So it would be the seven people here deciding whether or not we're going to grant it. I mean, that is subjective. It's open to prejudice, it's open to bias, and I could not support the planning commission getting involved in this, but it has to do with a fence that's six feet and then building it for eight feet like we did, you can't do it. Um, I, I just can't see the planning commission doing that. And then you get into this environmental assessment. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, you have this criteria, a tree is busting my foundation and I need to take it out. And somebody says it's a hundred year old tree. Um, you can't take it out. Just live with a broken foundation. And you, you look at the way this thing is written, conducted, evaluate the impact of trees on a local ecosystem. Who's going who's gonna to do that? Um, you're going to take into account the age, the health, the significance. I mean, that's that's subjective. You just can't 
deny a person a permit when he has a legitimate reason. You have a sick tree, it's breaking your foundation, it's gonna fall on your roof, it's gonna fall on your neighbor. But somebody says, hey, that's an old tree, a hundred years old, uh, you can't take it out. I mean, I, I, I just, to me, it's crazy. Um, as you can tell, I'm not all for this, and I felt like I fought the battle over the parks thing, and we finally reached a conclusion. But to my first question, Judy's, Chad, tell us why we need to do this, or is this just a solution looking for a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's, uh, I, I think it's a, a little of both. I mean, Sometimes people assume that things are happening that are not, and that's what happens most of the time when we go out and investigate these after the fact. We find that people are within the parameters, um, the best that we can tell. Uh, but there's just, um, if, if we had a process to where there was a permit, so we were notified and we had an opportunity for a quick comment to make sure everything was good and solid, then the communication around the community would be uh, much better. Staff right now is taking the heat on, well, why did you let them? Why didn't you, you know, do anything like this? I think that a really easy permitting process, basically going through the criteria as we know it now and making sure things are right. And then just having that written um, uh, permit that says, this is what they're doing. This is the timeline. These are the five trees on a little map. It makes, makes things work a little bit more smoothly. Um, and, and there's more than just a couple people that are curious about this. I mean, trees are important to people, and, and, and we do get a lot of comments. Uh, and when we get these phone calls and we say, we don't know, you know, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't help the situation. But I wouldn't make it difficult with the, you know, taking a look at the ecology and things like that. You know, the, the tree situation, I think, in the neighborhoods around here are pretty simple. It's in the preparing area. There is an ecological consideration that's already being made. You know, this is the area next to Neococcus Creek. We're going to look at the distance from the creek and the high tide up to the run. And they can't remove trees unless they're dead, dying, or diseased already. That works. Um, as far as what people are developing in some of the trees around here, you know, these trees are aging out. Uh, spruce, you know, these spruce are about 180 uh, years old, is what the are is telling me. And they're starting to drop things and, and do that. So there will be some removals, but we're also seeing water tree growth in town as well. I think that net net, when you look at the old pictures of Deer Hart, we've definitely seen more trees over a period of time. So they are beginning to encroach. Or, you know, some of them will be thinned out for the health of the trees. That's something we can accomplish as well. But, um, the short story is, is some sort of a simple permitting process would be helpful. An arduous one would not. <laughs> Yes, John. Um, one thing that we could do, of course, get a band involved, then we're just totally fine. Uh, but the this environmental assessment section could be stricken in, in, in favor of just the criteria themselves. Mm -hmm. The criteria are clear. There they are. We don't need to add more criteria. We just need to have a permitting process for the criteria that already exist. I, I, you know, I, I lived with what we came out with the park that went from this to this, and it made sense. Uh, and there was a couple of things in here that just, just uh, somebody coming in and having seven people decide whether they cut a tree down. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know. Anything else, Terry? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I have. Madam Chair, may, yes. may I comment on one of the things to carry off? Yes. yes. Uh, real quick, excuse me, um, Commissioner Plan. The, the, the only one time that we brought this to the Planning Commission was the golf course. The golf course wanted to get rid of some trees, more than five. I remember going over it, and I will concur with Terry. There was no criteria uh, because we don't have any really written up that, um, that would help us through that process. So it was a lot of feelings. So some criteria, even if we do get to that point to where the planning commission is making decisions on trees, somehow a little bit of criteria would be a good uh, thing to have as well. Yeah, you can always have sensible criteria. I mean, I, I, I guess I could live with a permit if you had a sensible criteria. Um, and, you know, that way, I'm going to apply to do something they would have done and could have done it. Has anybody really been abusing this? Are they going out and just mowing down the trees? 
Well, you know, it is not very. I had a couple instances where we get some new contractors in town that uh, just go to town. It, generally, it works out because, you know, five trees or large trees on a property are not that common. Um, the other thing is, is that they also take down all the trees that are within the building envelope of the building itself and the um, uh, septic systems. So some people will come by and say, well, there was nine trees taken out. Um, I think that some criteria would be the building envelope. Does that count as your five trees? In the city of Gearheart, we have not been doing that. So the building envelope trees come down and then five additional ones. That has happened a few times. And there has been people that have taken down seven trees, eight trees. A couple of times. Where, where did this environmental thing come from? Did you dream that up or did it come from your language? Yeah, I don't remember that. Um, I don't know that I, yeah, I wasn't prepared to really have environmental in there, but I think that the riparian area already has a lot of that. Well, how did it end up in here? I, I think it was just through conversation. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I thought I took it directly from what you said. That they, yeah, <laughs> no, because I was pretty interested in keeping it really yeah. simple. I so. certainly didn't write any of that language, and nor did you. So I don't know. Right. Well, it just happened. <laughs> language, so that's maybe something that we can discuss. <laughs> I'm done. Because that day where I wrote it, there will be problems. Well, I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, most of the things that I have questions on have been brought up by the rest of you. Uh, commission, but um, I, under the number six, preservation and removal of trees, I, I guess um, what I feel like is missing is some sort of a statement that would say, um, when you can trim rather than remove, um, you know, in other words, care for the tree as it gets older rather than just cutting it down. And maybe like some of the criteria could be a little more specific. I mean, maybe we could add some, including but not limited to trees encroaching on foundations and trees encroaching on, I mean, I have right now three trees that are growing like practically over my roof. I mean, I feel like we should say in there, it's better to trim those or come back then get rid of them all together. It's but cheaper they, too. <laughs> <laughs> to, to just cut yeah. them down. No, the trim. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, the the, the, the yeah. permit not be cheap. cheaper for trim. Yeah, we've been trimming them over our roof forever. It's about $30,000 to take a tree out. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the only other quest, question I had is then, like in the criteria, putting something in there about trees very close to the house or trees encroaching on a foundation, just to try and give the criteria a little more meat. And uh, yeah, it's some of the same questions. That's it. I, I, I guess it's just trying to strengthen the conserve. It's already in there that we want to create conditions favorable to the preservation of our plant heritage and you know pruning as opposed to removing it kind of fits in with that. Um, specifically when we when they did take the trees out of the uh, out of the golf course I begged them to leave the spruces and they did. But that was a planning commission level. We, we kind of get to the decision of do we want to be more restrictive in this policy to prevent tree cutting, or do we want to have a permit that allows the five trees that just have to work on a permit? So, kind of seeing some somewhere in the middle here, or you're talking about you know, some of you are talking about keeping it simple, some of you are talking about you know, more restrictions. Just an observation. Anything else, Juan? Okay. Did you have anything else, or did you? No. No. Okay. So here I am. First off, we start out on the first page. All new subdivisions shall provide a landscaping plan. 
the statement that we're taking away is landscape buffer to subdivision on Highway 101. Now we changed it to saying all subdivisions have to have a landscaping plan. That's a big leap. We have a subdivision ordinances that give criteria there. So if we go and take the statement and just say all subdivisions have to have a landscaping plan. Yeah. But it doesn't say they have to do any landscaping, you just have to have it. <laughs> so uh, I would suggest maybe rethinking that part. Yes, there is a redundancy in this part about 101, part of that coming from the TSP, where we have a 101 overlay zone. And so part of that comes from that, and there are redundancies. And um, when we did the TSP and had to lay it into what we already had, Sometimes these got duplicated. So it, it's not the only thing it is. Um, I know, John, that you said the language doesn't change any, but it changed huge. It actually right. went from more than five to five or less. Oh, and to me, that's like yeah. a difference say it didn't, between the didn't change. Huh? I didn't say it didn't change. No, you, you said the, the criteria didn't change. Right. But criteria. what the criteria don't don't take no, I'm just saying when you go from having criteria to remove more than five to having the same criteria criteria for, for removing one, two, then it's a huge change. I'm allergic to trees. I'm allergic to certain trees. I'm going to remove it. It doesn't oh person gets medically sick. That is in here. Dogs, I found out, are allergic to eucalyptus trees. We had a huge eucalyptus tree in our neighborhood. People came in and took it down. I am concerned that when we go from what we have now, it was essentially slightly over 36 inch circumference to something where you can reduce the circumference and then you lay on all these other criteria. We've made it harder for the, our staff. We've made it harder for the people that live here. I think we're taking away their rights. If I don't like that tree, why should I have to go ask? I'm not too sure why people always complain at City Hall about trees. I don't, I'm that that kind of blows my mind. But then I read that people call the police about the set people alarm going off. And I'm not too sure what they think they're going to do about that either. I think this would be really hard to get past I think our citizens, our community. Um, I have trees. I have my neighbor's trees sitting in my yard. Um, they're going, uh, I, I have no idea what an environmental assessment might be. There's no explanation in this document about what well, we agree. Talking. We don't know where that language came from. So, okay. <laughs> so you're telling me you just floated in here. Um, I, I think that um, I thought the plan was originally to um, review it and uh, maybe just a simple permitting. You know, there's a there's some simple online form where you just say, Joe Smith, I'm going to be cutting down these these trees, so you know what's happening, and he's and he can tell you I have measured them, and the tree circumference is it's ten inches and nine inches or or whatever it is, and just something so you you know it. I think that when you start putting fees in it, then you created a whole nother problem. Um, I just, I just think it's really tough. And, 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 and the question was that you brought up, Chad, I know that we, when we did a subdivision a lot there on the east side of 101, and they have multiple trees on the lot. And we look at it as a planning commission, and they were going to cut down this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree, this tree. And we worked at trying to reduce the number of trees they were going to cut down. So we're, we're proactive in supporting trees, but if, what if I want to cut down seven trees? There's no, there's no process. 
I can cut it down to five. I don't know. That's my problem. Well, five would go to the planning commission. Yeah. You can you can cut down 30, but you have to get the way it's currently written, in my understanding, is you could cut up to five without a permit. That is not what it says. Well, that's that's way back what it is. What, the old it's what it is now, right? But not this. It says are required to have a permit to cut up to five trees. Period. So it's five trees per year. Per year. They say residents are allowed to cut up to five trees once a year with a permit. But I want to cut down six. Then it has to go to the land commission. It doesn't say, there's nothing in there saying anything about that. Well, I think it's oh, I, I think I see your point. If you look at the original language, it said more than five trees. And you could say, I want to cut down 23 and go to the planning commission. But the revised language says you can only cut down five, period. And that, I, I think that was a, a drafting error. I think we need to ask that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not correct. Yeah. But, but to your point about the criteria, I see your concern with old allergies, your dog doesn't like the trailer. That's your safety hazard. To me, the, the, the criteria we have. Are are open enough that you just put it in your permit that the safety hazards I can't go out in my yard because I start sneezing. Okay, because the tree in. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that's going to make you say it's a safety hazard because it's leaning onto my roof or a safety hazard because it it's going to lean into my car and scratch the roof. Say you define the safety hazard and. Or, or if that's not definitive enough, let's change that wording. But I don't see us having to, you know, have 20 criteria instead of five or four. It's, it's my pollen having criteria rest for one single tree because it's, it's one to five, right? And my problem is having to have criteria and maybe I just want to cut down that tree. Yeah. I and, just and, don't and that's, like it. That's other on the permit. <laughs> I don't the way have I'm other it. here. <laughs> well, we haven't created a permit. But but I thought about the permit and I'm thinking if you have those criteria and then you say other, and then you put your concerns in there and I don't see why anybody's going to, I don't see this being that restrictive. It's informant. I, that's what I thought John and I were trying to do. I, I understand. Informative that. for our, our folk. I, I understand. But when you're writing ordinance, it becomes the law. Well, then that's it's what we're, doing not, it's, it's, we're it's, putting your input into the ordinance right. so we can correct it, you know. Okay. Yes, Don. Uh, I just have a <clears throat> clarification as the ordinance is written right now, Chad. If I can take five trees annually, and for any reason I want, as long as it's not in the riparian zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, more, more or less, right? But if I want to take down six trees, then I need to come to you or come to the planning commission and, and explain why, which is a safety hazard or, or, or another reason. And then you would say, give a permit, which doesn't exist right now, or the planning commission would give approval right now, and they would either we would, we would either reject or, or accept it. Is that how it is right now? Yes. But the part of the issue the staff is having, or the city is having, is that there's no documentation of those first five trees or only five trees, correct? But if I come to you with six trees, now we have a documentation of it. Correct. So if somebody cuts down five trees, we don't know. Let's say uh, six months later, they cut down two more. You know, it's going to be hard for us. If the stumps are there, we can figure it out. Mm -hmm. but, so that is one issue that would be helpful is kind of keeping an eye on the amount of trees that have been cut on a piece of property. Do you want to know that info? Um, Wouldn't that be? If, if Yeah, if, if the staff is going to be held to preventing people from cutting down some trees, 
uh, other than F5, yes, it is helpful. It, it would be helpful for the communication. Or and even for just the files. And just so that we could say that when the neighbor is really complaining about the other neighbor doing this, we could say, well, actually, they only cut down four previously. This is their fit, so they're good to go. And they've met the criteria. <laughs> Correct. And then, you know, we could also clean up like, all right, so what is a year? Is it January, you know, uh, or is it uh, from when the first tree was cut down a year from there, you can cut down one more. If you cut down all five, one year from that, you can cut down five. If you cut them down in pieces, one year, one there, one there, then we probably would track the age of your, the amount of time that's passed since they cut each tree and allow them to do that. It would simplify. I mean, it does sound complicated, but that, would simplify it for staff in regards to working uh, between the half fields and the McCoys. Okay. If we were to, right now, if we were to deny them, say if they didn't have any criteria that met that and they cut down five trees and then they came to us and they wanted to cut down three more and we said no, the process now is that they would appeal to the planning commission. Let me add that this says that any, that right, that to Terry's point, number one, D1, the planning commission may grant or deny a request for a pre removal permit. That means that every time someone in the city of Earhart wanted to cut down a tree, he would be for the planning commission. Yeah, I had that one too. Oh, you corrected that one. So it sounds like, sounds like there needs to be a, a, another layer of cleanup. Um, for these kinds of things, but I've heard a, I've heard a couple of you um, could be concerned about the fact that the public may object to the, another layer of bureaucracy, um, and that sounds like and maybe fees involved, and that sounds like it's probably going to be your biggest pushback from the community in general. Would you agree with that? I'm not sure it's just the bureaucracy is the issue. I think it's the trees. I, I think people feel very strongly about um, being able to take out a tree if there's a problem with that tree. I know uh, we've taken out several trees. We had a good reason to do it. It was breaking our foundation and another one hanging over the roof. Uh, part of it had blown off and we wanted to take the rest out. Well, this wouldn't prevent people from doing it. It would just require that they get a permit. And then you come before the planning commission to ask to do it. That's crazy. If it's, if it's more, more than, than five. five. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not the way it's written. Not that. But we clearly have instructions to fix them. Yes, that, yeah. and that's one of the cleanup yeah. spots. Yeah. yeah, I think you do five, but that's fine. Right. Six, seven, or more. I, I could go along with the decent, simple planning permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, John. Uh, I wonder, I, I have no idea if this is doable within the processes of the community, but um, it, it sounds like what we really want here is not so much a permitting process for the one, two, three, four, whatever number we choose to be the number, but a notification um, so that the town is aware that a, uh, not, doesn't have to come before the planning commission, it just goes as a notification to the town so they can log it, so they can begin the process of even with the existing language saying, oh, you cut one, two, three, four, you need a permit at five. Is there any process we could have like that where there's simply notification, not permitting of tree cutting? I think that's what the process is. I think that's what, that's that's a primary purpose of the process of the permit is to give staff some data, right? So that when they start getting phone calls, somebody's cutting down a tree, they go, "Oh yeah, we know about that. Let me tell you about it." Right, I agree. Instead of going up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, and not know. So is there such a possibility of a? I don't know what you would call that. I call it notification, but is there any such thing? One could put into an ordinance. What would be the benefit of that over a because, process? Because then Angelina says one. It's got a spreadsheet. One. 166 Mark Marion. One. Send another note a week later, cutting down another one. Two. 
And I know that I haven't crossed the boundary of needing a permit. With, we can eliminate all the rest of this language. Skip the permit for the first Skip time. Skip the permits, just leave the language we had in place. And that's what kind of what we have going on now is we don't have a permit process for the first five and people uh, don't know how to it's a beautiful problem. That, that's the problem with the well. trees. I mean, with what we experience, yeah, it's a problem. But I mean, how often do we have these conversations? A year, 10, 15. Let, let, let me ask you this, Chad. Is there such a thing that you don't have to change ordinance? I know when, when I have bylaws and I want something to make it a policy, we don't change the bylaws, we just make it a policy. I don't know city government if there's such a thing where you wouldn't have to rewrite the ordinance. Yeah. But it would be something else we could do in order for you to be notified to to so people would let you know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It sounds like a permitting process. To me. Okay. Okay. Well, but does that have to be an ordinance? It would be good to have an ordinance that a permit will be required. Okay. Otherwise, if we didn't have it in an ordinance and they decided okay. not to go with the permit, there was nothing. It doesn't have so to. we could reasonably, but because there isn't, we've done this in that first section, we could reasonably rewrite the ordinance with that one caveat that, that in our, you know, Taking down trees, just you have your form, whatever, and they can do it online. Yes. One of your options would be to leave the ordinance as it is and then instruct staff to put together a simple permitting process that will work within that ordinance. And then we would come up with something without changing the ordinance at all. Uh, and that's kind of why I was bringing that up. It just depends on the, um, you know, the, the commission as a whole, which way do you want to go? Do you want to leave it as it is and just be a little bit more restricted with the permitting process? Or is this also a true attempt to go ahead and make things more uh, restricted? Okay. As far as cutting down trees. Okay. Right. Is there an ordinance attached to the uh, garage sale permit? Then we'll have a permit. Like then, I can tell you the way it, 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 it's working on the beach vegetation. Uh, I just did another permit for a gentleman uh, that was all in order, lots of pictures taken. Because this was a sensitive area, we did pre, during, and post meeting things on that site. The person who did the cutting did it perfectly as per you know our requirements. And uh, we had some people that were coming up and talking to them and said, what the heck are you doing? And they just showed them the permit and all the things that they were restricted. It helped. Um, they certainly didn't burn their way in the city hall after that interaction. So it did work. <laughs> um, so and things uh, like the garage sale thing, the call line of product, that, that application doesn't cost any money. It doesn't, it doesn't take any time. It doesn't take any time. So we're looking for something that will not take you time but if someone calls you, then you don't need to do research. You've got a document or something. I guess I could explain a little bit more to you how it's working now. Okay. Um, because we know we're going to get people that are very excited or interested in what's going on. When somebody calls and says, how many trees, what trees, what size trees, typically 99% of the time we say, well, it's me. Let's go out there. Because I'll do anything to get out of the office, really. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I want to comment on that as well. So I'll go up there, we'll take a look at the trees, we'll figure out a way to mark them, we'll give them a thumbs up, and then when they go ahead and I get a complaint, we wait for the complaint, and then I'm able to say, no, I actually, we actually got eyeballs on it. And here's what we saw, and that, that works pretty good. But, you know, on the other side, you don't really know exactly how much tree work is going on out there. So if we do go through a permitting process and we find that it's overwhelming, we'll have to make some changes or make some changes to a fee that gets some help uh, with somebody that could maybe help us out part time. Like that. But I, I don't think it's going to be that much. We already have a local tree cutting and arborist company, uh, companies well trained because we keep threatening them that if they screw up, this is going to get really difficult. 
And I think that's part of you know why we were here. There's there's a few screw ups like that. So they're they're doing pretty good. Uh, the local people, but every once in a while we get somebody from Portland or you know somebody who was a logger once, and uh, they they want to go ahead and they're doing some tree work. So that's when it gets difficult. Okay. So fellow fellow commissioners, we did present a good this draft. We we do have some concerns. I can see Russ over here. He's been editing. Um, I don't. I, is is someone wanting to put forward a proposal of where we go from here? Well, I think Russ and they've they've heard us. They can go back to the drawing board and come yeah. up with a paragraph that says what we want to hear. Okay, so that's Terry's proposal. Does anyone? I, no, I do. You, <laughs> are you laughing, Don? <laughs> um, I would just first say thank you, John, Russ, for taking a swing at this. Um, it's a bit more complicated, maybe, than what we originally kind of were thinking of. Um, I'm with the city that I think a, a, you guys have worked out the permitting process, but like the first five trees permit so that you're notified and can start tracking that. That one's free, like as it is right now. So we're not changing that. Anything additional, uh, then there are fees associated with that. Then, as far as if we want to lower the circumference of a tree, that's like maybe new. Um, the number of trees is obviously new, but otherwise, it seems that the existing ordinance works. We're just not getting information that we would like. Yeah. Yeah, John. In hearing the, the input, um, I think what the preponderance of uh, intent of the commissioners is probably to have leave it alone, but have Chad come up with a permitting process that doesn't exist to match the current ordinance. The only problem I see with that is not the issues of reduction of circumference. We can take that off and things like that. go back to the original language of the conditions which were never changed uh, other than mm -hmm. those. Um, but I think this this one issue, this one nugget has to get resolved, which is when do you start counting? Uh, which is, I think, what Angelina told us last month was part of the problem, uh, which is that you know, the, the, the permitting is based on the intent to cut more than five per year. Um, that's a really vague thing to say. When do I? Do I cut four and then go say, oh, cool, I'm about to cut the fifth. I'm going to need a permit now. So it, it, it suggests a level of planning on the part of the person doing the cutting that's probably not realistic, um, which is why if there was any one single change we could make and leave everything else alone, if that's the intent of the commission, which I'm comfortable with, is to somehow get a process which, as you pointed out, doesn't limit. It's not the goal was never to change the numbers that they can cut. It's to make sure that if you're cutting trees, just, just let us know that you're cutting trees. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. If we leave the ordinance completely alone and just ask Chad to do a permitting process, they're not going to be able to fix that one issue. I, I think that maybe what we're looking at, I'm going to try to see if I've got it. We're looking at a simple permitting process. I think that going to circumference actually is a lot smarter. I can take a tape measure and go around it. I would suggest like some six inches because that's fairly close to the 12 inches now. I don't think. <laughs> uh, oh, the time. You just mentioned it. What and to clarify, is a year a calendar year? It is a year going from when the first tree is cut down. Uh, from when the permit is issued, one year from when the first permit is issued. Yeah, well, but so why do we have the five tree rule if we're going to do a permit? And we go over 36 inch circumference. I'm going to just say if you're cutting a tree over 36 inches, 
one or 20, you get a permit. The, the simple form that they would fill out, like a garage sale, except it's a tree. Right. Anything over the five, it would still stay the same. They're coming, they're wanting to cut down more than five. We have that in here, but the, then they would come to the planning commission. I'm, you know, um, but, but why the five? If, if we're going to ask for a, we're going to ask for a permit for over 36 inches, aren't we asking for a permit for one tree? Right. Yeah, we're that asking is, for a permit for cutting down any tree. Any tree. So what? What's the number five have to do with anything? Well, we got a five without a permit. That's the current right. right. So, right. But I'm saying, why don't we get rid of that? But I think I the reason think was because under five right now, one they don't need a permit, but two they don't need to come to the planning commission. Well, I don't want to come to the planning I don't know. <laughs> well, well, it's time to do it, but I'm saying that's why the five is there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we should change the number of free cuts from five to zero. I think we should leave it at five. Well, not zero, but it, I, I just think if you're getting a permit to cut one tree, right, then what's five? <clears throat> well, you can cut five. You get to cut five. You just have to let the city know what your plan is. Why not no one's going to say no. Have a permit for a tree or ten trees. No, it's number no. six. You need the permit. Number six, you need permission. But, but aren't we getting a permit, the informational yes. permit at the first tree? It's a notification that you're going to cut a tree. Where is all? Where? That's what I was hoping. Because it's not a process that would be. If you're going to cut five, you're going to need different you Okay, I mean, it's just you got to have I some sort of process. Six on, you need a permit. Oh, okay. All right, Don. So remember, Sharon Clifford brought this up and right. passed this on the Cannon Beach. Ordinance and that ordinance says if you're going to cut one tree, you need a permit. And that, I think, in my view, was prohibitive. So we're trying to maybe keep the five for free, but then we're going to develop a permit process and all this kind of stuff. And then, so we're kind of starting to go down that rabbit hole we were talking about. And um, what that's been brought up. So do we? If they're gonna, if a person, a homeowner is gonna cut down one tree, they get a permit. Well, now we're more likely matching the Cannon Beach ordinance. Okay. Right, but we're saying that between that first and fifth tree, the permit, like a garage sale permit, they set it in to the city. If Chad needing to get out of the office for some reason <laughs> wants to go check it to protect the trees, to protect the trees, that's right, it's necessary. Then he could go check it. He may be familiar with the tree, and there, and on that form, you can say the reason I'm removing it. It's disease. I need it. You know, other. But the, then, unlike. We, we don't want to be Cannon Beach. Um, don't put that in there. Uh, <laughs> but the if, if they want to take out more than five, then they're going to have to, that process becomes more difficult. But they'd have to have a really good reason. They'd have to come before us. And I think that that would be agreeable. I don't know, how many people take out more than five trees? On a lot that's already developed and has the house on it. Oh, maybe once every two months. Maybe. Takes out more than five? No, it takes up, up to five. You know, like they, they'll do five trees at a time. About once every two months. With that many trees? Yeah, I mean, some of these properties, you know, especially at least some people are redeveloping and things, they're wanting to cut down some trees, but maybe it's less than that. I don't know. I don't know how you dead. Yes, John. So I think we're back to the crux of the matter, which is, yes. is there a possibility of a notification for one through five that doesn't require planning commission approval? Is that, right. is it, is that possible? Yeah, we, we would. I think that the best way to do that would be through a simple permit process, not just a notification process. Because they can tell us all day long how many days they're doing it. That's still no controller count. But so earlier in the discussion, 
somebody had said all permitting would require planning commission approval. But now we're hearing no. 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 That's, that's good. That's a good clarification. Yeah. That, Russ correct. edited it. That's what he said. <laughs> Yeah. So there's a one through five could be simple permitting process. Over five could be, hey, come talk to us. Yes. Yeah. I like simple that. process. Yeah. It's just a notification. You're going to set Okay. And before we sign it, we might take a look, or you know, we might not, but we would take a look. Would we'll look, we can come up with process. Would you go look if the property was on, you know, had the riparian zone on it? Yes. You absolutely would. Yeah. So if there's no permit process at all, how would you know? I find out about it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this would be with this kind of change that we're talking about. I think that that would be certainly much easier to move through the process of making this change in, in the community. I think what this will do is give us a little bit more control without making it overwhelming uh, to either staff or the residents or the trees. That seems like a win. -win. Okay. So we just need to come up with some language for the meeting. For those few things, we'll take a back back. Back. Okay. Excellent. John and Russ will take it back from Chad, tweak it. One more round will be um, let's talk about public hearings. You want an update from Garrett? Oh, I, I would love an update from Garrett. I'm sorry, I didn't even know he was here. I'm uh, are we done with let, let's first get are we are we is everyone We're done. I, 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 I just have one one other comment. And yes. And that would be if we develop a, a what I'm struggling with is when I hear, okay, like you got a mature eucalyptus that dogs are allergic to or whatever. The purpose is not to prohibit the removal of all trees, but to ensure that mature trees are removed only where necessary. So where does a eucalyptus that dogs are allergic to fit in with removed only where necessary? We don't have any criteria on necessity. Well, I'm not sure that's true. Uh, if you go back to uh, Russell's point in Section E, necessity to remove trees, which pose a safety hazard. That could be defined up or minutes. I believe there's a safety hazard for this because dogs eat it up. It's a safety hazard. I don't know whether or not we want to get much more specific than that. I think we should let that cover and let them put it down in their permit. Request. So you might add to the criteria and the board that you have there. No, I think it's there. Necessity to remove trees will pose a safety hazard. Okay. It, I think that's in there because it gives us the ability, to, let's say somebody cut down five trees and then a whole lot of things have problems. Gives me the ability to go ahead and allow that, depending on whatever criteria I come up with, which generally, if it's not obvious, and I wait for it to be, you know, if it's not obvious, then I'll ask them to get an arborist to send me a paragraph saying why this tree is dangerous, and then I'll give them a thumbs up to do it. If it's obviously dangerous, I'll let them cut it down. And I don't count that against people's tree usage for the year if I was tracking it. And I always have an idea because I'm pretty involved with it, but I don't have a dad. Are you uncomfortable now? Yes, Are you uncomfortable? with safety hazard being the blanket that would include this kind of eucalyptus category? Or would you like to see another category about health impacts or something? I've never been approached on the you know, poisonous tree situation. It just hasn't happened yet. Most of this has been wind damage or tops that have come out recently or right. a lot. I realize the safety hazard was not intended to cover things like that, but in the interest of not making more changes than we need, yeah. I'd suggest that we let safety hazard encompass that if we are comfortable with that if not we'll add another criteria what i get sometimes is people will say i want to cut down these five trees over here but then these two are safety hazards so really i get seven so if you just give us the idea that you'd like to keep the ordinance kind of how it is and then come up with the permit process we could pretty well clear up or give some options the way that that would look and it might spur some more conversation as well but i think it'll solve some of the issues because we are interested in clarifying 
How many trees have they actually cut down? What are the reasons that they're cutting it down? Is it in the riparian area? You know, we can put that all onto the permit and it would help clarify this. And uh, and we could also make the permit process so that it's in the code, but it's not very specific either. And so that the city can do what it is that they want to make sure they're tracking it where they want to uh, as well. So okay. we'll, we'll give it a shot. Hopefully that'll clear it out. We can take a, a big step if we need to take further. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know that we need to have the ordinance ready by next month. Okay. You know, and do a, a, I think there's still a lot of discussion. Okay. Or a little bit of discussion. All right. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Garrett, would you like to talk to us? I'm sorry. I didn't call on you. You need to unmute yourself. Or someone needs to. Yeah, you have. He's not muted, but he's not coming over the speaker. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for calling on me. I don't have very much to update you on. There's no um, variance or conditional use or rezoning proposals that uh, have come in and that are on their way to you, um, except for um, an application to convert uh, a portion of the city tennis courts to pickleball courts. And we're working through some incomplete issues on the application uh, with the applicant. And I think that'll be headed your way at some point, but we're not scheduling it yet. Um, that's it. Do you have any questions for me? Anyone have any questions for Garrett? No. Oh. Garrett and I did, and, and Angelina discussed this process earlier, and, and okay. Garrett did have some opinions. I'm just making sure that we kept it uh, simple, but then also with all the applicable criteria that somebody in the staff would need to make any decision, you know, especially if we become more restrictive. Is that true, Garrett? Yeah, I, um, I, I, I guess I'll say that it's. Um, it's super encouraging, or I'd say like inspirational to see you all as a planning commission, like not only deliberating, but doing the work um, that is often typically just assigned to staff to, to bring you material um, to discuss. And um, so I love listening to the conversation and I'm looking forward to helping out if Chad and Angelina ask for my help um, going forward. And yeah, simplicity, um, I think is a good goal. I think that there's opportunities to empower your staff um, to issue some permits instead of requiring everything to come to the planning commission um, and to rely on the expertise of arborists um, to make determinations about safety and the health of trees and to, uh, and to use, you know, use that expertise to basically let your residents and applicants get permits in an easy and simple fashion. So uh, I think you're headed in that direction uh, in, in a variety of ways, or you're, you're at least considering those ideas. So thanks for asking. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on. We don't have any new business. Do we have concerns of the commission? Yes, Judy. I just want to go back to your comment about you weren't sure about the tree um, planting crop ordinance process. And uh, I thought that was also an issue for you guys. Uh, and I could be wrong, but I thought you asked us to take a look at that. So are we ready to give it up or uh, do we need yeah, to go that, back to that? That was what I wanted to get us. Yeah. Uh, may I? Yes, John. I thought one simple thing we could do to address perhaps Sharon's uh, initial proposal is, again, this is permitting again, but um, provide the public a mechanism. There's no mechanism right now for them to submit an idea for uh, additional trees that has an actual you know, process associated with it. And Sharon had no process to follow. So she just said, I want to plant some trees. Um, so what I'm asking is, because I didn't get much sense of an appetite for that program, if there is one, it's not that difficult to at least just frame a process for that. But that's up to the commission. 
Is there a problem? Well, from Sharon's perspective, there was. Well, is that, you know, is that she wanted something to happen in her neighborhood, or and she didn't feel she had a mechanism to have the council or then the commission address it. As I recall, John, it was planting trees in public right, right away on city property, the city property, and that was the the issue. Correct. And the kind of trees that were being planted. That was also the issue. And so and the ability to maintain them long term. And the ability to maintain right. all the rest of these right. price. So my question goes back to the yes, uh, I was under the impression that this was an issue for you and you wanted us to solve it. And if that's the case, I think we need to keep it live. I can tell you. My my perspective on this is that I've been approached a couple of times, one of Jeff Miller, Sharon. Um, about planting trees on city property, and we just do not have a procedure for that. So, uh, you know, when it came to being in front of the city hall, we said, why not? Because that was pretty easy to maintain. Watering systems were already there. But then when we get into people in, in Sharon's um, desire was to plant a bunch of trees, well, then we, we get all these other things that we need to consider. So we do not have a policy for tree planting. So right now it's up to staff's discretion, and that's not good. I think it needs to be a public process. And if the public wants to put together a process that says, hey, you want to plant a bunch of trees? Here's the form to fill out. Come and talk to the planning commission. City staff will report on everything that it'll take for us to be make sure that those trees are, you know, that cost and things. That was my thought. And then, you know, I, I think is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Establish a process for them to submit the idea for staff to then say, okay, then $74,000 a year is yeah, necessary to yeah. maintain that. What you want to do? Yeah. I, I have to say, I don't know of other communities that allow their citizens to go and plant trees <laughs> on public <laughs> <on> property. <laughs> Jeff Miller promised he wouldn't do that again. Uh, <laughs> 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 so that uh, kind of makes me. Um, other concerns. I, I had one. We, we received this Oregon has an extreme housing shortage in our back of us. You did not address that. Was there something you want to share, Chad? Uh, no, I mean, Garrett is in the middle of and very integral to you, the housing process that we're working with with all the other cities. Um, we're going for a grant currently uh, to do another housing building analysis. So we just thought we would throw you some things that were interested or may apply to your heart as well to keep you up to date. Can you remind me the cutoff population that this change applies to with the R1 zone? I believe it's 5,000. Garrett, am I correct? It's 5,000 people in regards to the new R1 zone requirements for, uh, is it uh, alternative housing? Yes. I actually don't know off the top of my head for, uh, for sure. So I'm going to have to look that up for you. Which I can probably do now in a moment, but hamburger that's five thousand. Uh, okay, it's pretty one, close. To one that. hamburger because is five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are in that story? Uh, that story makes the criteria. Yep. But I don't think CSAC does. Yeah, I think it's five thousand. You lost your hamburger. Did you find it? No, no, it'll take a few a few more moments okay. than that. It's, yeah. If you haven't read the document, this this piece, it, it is interesting to see how the state of Oregon came up with their zoning. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? We're at the end of the agenda. If you don't have questions for the land use attorney, meeting is adjourned. Seven twenty. If you find it, let me know. <laughs> that story of population is not 10,554 this year. And I think it just That's went over. It. I think it's 10,000. 10,000. 10, is it 10? I, 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 I think it's 10. I don't think it's like the same size. Yeah. I wonder what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a thing from the clerks.